My Hero Academia World Heroes mission was very disappointing to say the least. My expectation for this movie was set unnaturally high due to what I believe was an anime movie's version of YouTube clickbait. Have I ever clickbaited? <laughs> Nah, of course not because I'm your boy the Hot Rodster here and if I'm being completely honest, maybe I have used clickbait a couple times on this platform, but I am working on improving my content so your expectations will be met by the thumbnail I put out. But similarly to how YouTubers use titles and thumbnails, I believe this movie's marketing team used posters and trailers to make the movie seem more hype than it actually was. Not only that, but they were coming off of two amazing movies so the expectations were through the roof and we're going to talk all about it right now. Now. Let's first talk about what you're probably most anxious for me to get to. Clickbait. Specifically, how did I feel this movie clickbaited its audience? Well, it's actually quite simple. In promotional art in the trailers, there was a stealth black suit worn by Deku, Shoto, and Bakugo. However, it was barely even used in the movie and there isn't any explanations as to why they are wearing it in the first place or why they switched back to their regular suits at the end. It's easy to infer that they wore it at the beginning in order to blend in with the night sky as they fell on the humorized base, but it just sucked that we didn't really get a whole lot of action in those suits. Shoto and Bakugo did a cool team up move, but that was about it. Deku was just running with the stealth suit trying to find the leader. I feel like they could have easily altered the story so that they would be wearing their suits for the big action scenes at the end but for some reason they didn't do that. Of the four major posters this movie was being advertised on, three of them featured Deku, Bakugo, and Shoto in their stealth suits. The marketing team must have known that these suits were very intriguing which is why they advertised it as one of its main selling points. It's kind of messed up that they did this because my expectation was for them to be wearing these for most of the film or at least for the big action scenes but those expectations were not met. I know this seems trivial but it really mattered to me and don't worry there's more to come in terms of how this movie clickbaited its audience. Let's talk about the trailers for this movie. Now I haven't seen all the trailers because I do like to keep some of the plot a mystery before I go in, but the few trailers I did watch were major clickbait. For one of the trailers, almost every time you see Deku, Bakugo, and Shoto it's in their stealth suits, not in their regular hero suits or in those farmer clothes Deku was wearing for most of the movie. Also the trailer showed Deku was on a nationwide wanted list for mass murder. Seeing this made me very shocked about what crazy stuff must be happening in this movie for Izuku Midoriya to be accused of such an act. Maybe his quirk went out of control and he knocked over a building that killed people or maybe there was an evil Deku clone who was set out to ruin his name. The first scenario would actually fit the theme of this movie better while the second one would probably be a more interesting movie than this one. Instead we got the most obvious and most boring answer as to why it was happening fake news. The leader of Humorize had access to dirty cops and they made up evidence linking him to an unrelated crime. The reason I don't like this is because it didn't create any inner conflict for Deku. Sure he has to leave the country but he doesn't have to question his own role in society nor think about whether the villains in this movie were actually right or not. He just gets to be happy knowing that he has always got the moral high ground. I get that this franchise isn't dark enough to have Deku kill or even be at fault for the indirect deaths of regular people but that little bit that was shown in the trailer made me believe that that's the direction this movie was heading in. I probably wouldn't even care about the specific thing that much if the trailer hadn't overhyped it, so that's how clickbait ruined parts of this movie for me. Don't get me wrong, I actually enjoyed this movie, however it just wasn't as good as the previous two My Hero Academia movies. Upon my first viewing of Two Heroes, I was honestly surprised that an anime movie could have this level of quality because I just hadn't seen a really good one before. And FYI, when I say anime movie in this video, I'm only talking about movies based on anime franchises, but don't adapt any manga material. Some examples of these would be Dragon Ball Z and the Naruto movies. I'm not talking about movies like Spirited Away, Your Name, or the Demon Slayer movie. Movie. But don't worry, I already know those are good anime movies. So like I said earlier, I hadn't seen good anime movies so Two Heroes definitely surprised me. A couple of things really stood out to me in that movie, one of them being Melissa, a movie exclusive character. She was just so cool that I was almost instantly invested in her character. She created a device which allowed Deku and All Might to fight the enemy as equals. Which is another thing about that movie that stood out. Seeing that mentor-mentee team up was awesome and that moment is very difficult to top, but somehow Heroes 
Rising was able to. Everyone had their moment in that movie, even some of the smaller characters, and it had the best fight scenes of any My Hero Academia movies and potentially out of the entire franchise. The movie World Heroes Mission had some cool fight scenes, but nothing can compare to those first two movies. The entire movie was actually pretty tame compared to those. Again, it wasn't bad, but it just didn't live up to my expectations. Like I said, Two Heroes showed me that anime movies could be good, but World Heroes was just average like the rest of them. Average isn't bad, but it's just not quite as hype as I was expecting. Again, some of my expectations were unnaturally raised due to the clickbait marketing, but setting that aside, I hope we can all agree that this one just didn't live up to the amazingness that was the first two. I did like Rhodey though, the movie original character who helped Deku out. He was very relatable despite being a thief because he had two siblings he was looking after, so I know that he was doing bad things for a good reason. It doesn't completely excuse his crimes, but to put it simply, if someone was going to get into illegal activities, this would be one of the most wholesome reasons as to why they would do it. My admiration for him ran so deep that I was even concerned for him after he betrayed Deku. It was easy to tell that he was very scared and concerned for the well-being of his siblings, so I was easily willing to forgive him for betraying Deku and move on. However, despite all the good things I've said about this man, his quirk was very mid and nothing can change my mind on that. It only really existed to create artificial tension at the end when he pretended to betray Deku again. It was obvious that he wasn't going to do it because the movie was nearing its end and I already knew that he was a genuinely good person, so the little bird confirming his true intentions meant absolutely nothing to me. The suspense that led to the quirk reveal didn't have quite the effect that the movie intended for it to have. Overall, I still like Rhodey's character, but among the movie exclusives, he still doesn't hold a candle to Melissa Shield. Let's talk about the villains, because they were pretty basic. Fleck Turn was kind of cool, I guess. He had a sad backstory, but there wasn't enough focus on his character to make me feel any real sympathy for him. Not to mention his whole thing was, my quirk hurt me in life, so I'll hurt anyone who has a quirk. And it's hard to sympathize with those who want to hurt people just because they are hurting. There's a world where that's possible, but not if their end goal is simply just harming people. For example, in Naruto, Obito and Madara believed that the infinite Tsukuyomi was the only way to achieve world peace and to reverse the pain inflicted on the world. The two were willing to hurt people in order to accomplish that goal. That's what I mean when I say I can sympathize with anime characters who hurt people, but not with those whose primary objective is to hurt people, like Fleck Turn. He would have been a much more interesting character if he found a way to get rid of quirks completely like Overhaul did and tried to force that upon the world. At least then, from his perspective, he is curing those who have had quirks which he considers to be a disease. Instead, his cure is just death. He'd kill people who, like himself, have no control over whether they were born with a quirk or not. It's just ridiculous and it wasn't captivating enough for me to even start relating to his character. The other minor villains didn't really interest me either. They had some cool quirks, I guess, but I never got an explanation as to why they were working for a person who hates quirks. Were they prepared to die for his vision of the world? And what about the non-quirk users of Humorize? Why were they okay following a person who has a quirk? Because once all the other quirk users are gone, the few that would be left would basically be their dictators as they could rule with force. It just seemed like a really bad deal for everyone involved, but we don't really get any clarification on that. The Deku vs. Fleck turn fight wasn't all that either. The animation was cool, but again, it couldn't compare to the past couple of movies. There wasn't really any clashing of ideologies either when there definitely should have been. Fleck Turn thought quirks were disgusting, while Deku thought that they were the most amazing things in the world. At least one of them should have had their ideology shaken up a bit, but that didn't happen at all. But if we're specifically talking about the action, I'm not gonna lie, it bored me. The whole thing with Fleck Turn's barriers was very similar to Nine's barriers in the last movie, so a lot of the action just looked monotonous to me. Basically, Deku punches or kicks as hard as he can, but ultimately fails because he can't penetrate the barrier. Also, I was never really worried for Deku because he always had 100% of one for all up his sleeve. The damage that was being caused to him by lasers was nothing compared to the amount of damage he could do to himself if he unleashed the full potential of his quirk. This made it so the stakes didn't really feel huge, at least not the stakes for Deku's safety. And I was right, at the end most of the injuries that he was recovering from were self-inflicted. In conclusion, I really did like this movie but it felt like a huge step backward in terms of quality of the story and animation. The first two My Hero Academia movies are some of the best anime movies I've seen while this one was average at best. I still had a lot of fun watching it and I liked hearing the Yusei Run theme song for the climax. It feels like they don't use that song as much anymore, which is a shame because it's so good. I also liked seeing the drug Trigger get some acknowledgement since it was really big in the Vigilante series. Maybe this means we'll see the character from that series interact with Deku and friends sometime. Who knows? I guess only time will tell.
If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.